Hey everybody, this is Jason Fawn from Power Rangers Time Force in Resident Evil. I am here in Singapore Comic Con, the first Ranger to ever come to Singapore, so uh, I'm very excited to be here. At the time, I was doing soap operas. So I just, you know, you're trying to get whatever job you can, and then this one kind of came through. Yeah, Red for Lost Galaxy didn't get it. A year of my life goes by, working on different stuff. Soap opera started for me a bit. The next year, Lightspeed came, I went and read for it again. Didn't get it, continued my life. And then the third year, they brought me back again, and I always laugh and say, either they felt sorry for me, or they, uh, they, liked, they really liked me. So um, that one, Wes, the character Wes and I really aligned with who I am. So I think it just was a perfect fit and it, it worked out. I think the, the biggest challenge for me would be playing two characters. You know, it's a kid's show, but they treated it a little bit differently that year. Um, and I think being on a kid's show, you still wanted to, you know, as an actor, really discern the difference between the two characters. So just making sure everything I did is Alex from the way that I sit, the way that I talk, every mannerism was different than Wes. So I think that was probably the most difficult component of it. It was weird, because Hollywood would consider Power Rangers a kid's show, and um, they didn't take it seriously from an acting perspective, which is crazy, because you know our season was, was very dark, and it was, you know, they, they really went over the character development. So, so at first, no, but it's like weird, because it, it, Power Rangers has really built itself up and built itself up. Now, I'm getting movie offers and movie roles because a lot of these kids were fans growing up. Now they're making projects, so if they see my name and do it, or they're reaching out, so now it's helping me 20 years later, which is insane. For those of you that don't remember, and there, we had a situation called 9-11 back in America, where there was the planes had gone through the World Trade Center. Um, I was in Texas maybe a couple years ago, and one of the guys that was waiting in line was, uh, this probably make me you know, sad, um, he's an officer, he's a police officer. And when he watched the show, his brother was flying home to see his brother. They were younger. And he said, hey, don't watch the final episodes of Power Rangers Time First. Wait for me to get home. His brother was on the plane. And so he um, created a, a deep hatred towards people of Muslim faith because of that. Because his brother was on the plane. He was waiting to watch it. and. Um, and so he, he really, uh, he struggled with that hatred for a long time. Eventually he watched it and one of the messages from Power Rangers Time Force is to, to not dislike people who don't look like you, to accept people. And that was a message that he learned um, and that helped him to get through that time and to lose his hatred of people of Muslim faith. So that was probably of thousands of stories. I mean, his brother was on the plane and his other, you know, he's probably like 13 years old and he died and, and uh, but the show helped him overcome his hatred. Yeah, crazy, huh? I think like any death, it's the denial phase is what kicks in. It doesn't feel real. You keep expecting it to someone to tell you it's not real or waking up from a nightmare. So, so I think denial is, it it's just doesn't translate. You know, Jason was a very, probably the toughest guy that I knew physically, right? So, um, so it was a hard pill to swallow. I mean, he was a very close friend of mine. We uh, spent a couple decades traveling the world. Um, you know, I think a lot of the, the, where I am in the Power Ranger franchise had a lot to do with him helping me get to where I am. Um, he'd always bring me places. So Jay, Jay was a, a, a fan of mine. He really liked me. So. Um, so he, he, he taught me a lot, took me a lot of places, and I, I owe a lot to him. So, yeah, great guy. To be honest, continuing to talk about him. So when the questions came up, you know, they were saying, hey, if you don't, if you don't want to answer those, I'm like, no, no, I mean, like, it's, let's talk about it. It's, you bring up his name, you bring up his legacy, what he meant to you, how can help other people. So I think continuing to bring people's names up and talk about them is a good thing like you would a loved one or parent or grandparent that dies, bringing them up, just keeping something that remembers them by you, you keep their, their name fresh out there and yeah. You know. We went to a lot of places together. It's funny, no one's ever asked me that question. 
Uh, it's, I, I, maybe because we, you know, but I'm trying to think of the one that comes to mind. The, the one that I always enjoy is we were in New Zealand filming and uh, we were filming outside somewhere. And so they had porta potties set up for like bathrooms. And um, it was kind of like when you're filming, if you're, if you're hiking somewhere and there's like public porta potties, it was kind of like, because we were out there we had to just use, and him and I both ate something, we had stomach ache. So we were in these porta potties going to the bathroom at the same time. But they were, they, they were so bad. They reeked so bad. Both of us were going to the bathroom while we wanted to throw up. So we're laughing while we're throwing up and we're talking through the walls. And I'll always remember that. So he's on the other side of the stall and we're, he's like, oh my God, this is awful. And we're gagging, we're throwing up, but we're laughing, but we're sick. <laughs> so, and I always laugh at that. He's like, oh my God, this is like prison. So <laughs> that's something I always remember.